to just give a little bit of synopsis about what this film is about. It's an epic uh, that follows the life of this um, great medieval uh, Russian icon painter, Andrei Rublov, a real historical figure, even if much of the film is fabricated. Um, but it's a kind of historical uh, biography of this icon painter. But it, it, it goes about telling this story in a very unconventional way, not at all a way that you would expect mm -hmm. a historical biography yeah. drama to play out. Um, its narrative is structured chronologically, more or less. It involves some flashbacks. Um, but but the it's it's composed by a series with a series of vignettes or as Tarkovsky calls them novellas, and uh, their unity is not immediately apparent um, in terms of the progression of of the narrative or of mm. a particular plot. Um, so even in the arrangement of these these vignettes, these scenes from Andre Rublev's life, there is this kind of juxtaposition. This odd um, arrangement that you have to look somewhere else for its internal logic, you know, and, and it really causes you as, as, a, as a viewer to kind of reflect. And I think that perhaps, you know, Tarkovsky's goal in that is to, as you said, Nathan, to engender or to create an idea or a feeling, something more than just you know, here's the story of Andrei Rublev's life. There's the length of the film, and then there's this kind of, this epiphany experience, you know, like the film is going somewhere, but you don't know where it's going. And you, you know, especially on first viewing, you, like many have described, like they, they, you don't really know what's happening, who is that, what's going on. And yet somehow the film ends up at this place that is, from everyone I've talked to, like overwhelming. <laughs> So yeah. I don't know. I want to, maybe we can, we can sort of start. Yeah. There. I mean, it is, I, I really think that it becomes clear on the second viewing just how each piece does converge on this final episode. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause even the final episode, the bell, right. Is confounding again, because it follows a totally different character, a character we've never seen through the rest of the film. We've yeah. been watching it at this point for like two and a half hours close to three hours and and what we're, we're now being introduced to this like new main character. Andre Rublev, of course, uh, has taken a vow of silence. He doesn't show up that often, but anytime he does show up, He's it's just there as an observer. It's just a look. Yeah. yeah. And and so so even in that final episode, it's like, what is this? Why am I all of a sudden watching this this story about this bell being made? But 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 boy, does it like drive home something at the end and kind of give a, a unity to the whole, the whole film in retrospect. It's almost like, it's almost like a life really, you know, this is a thought that's just occurring to me now, but it's like at the end of our life, at our last judgment, right, there is going to be a, a sort of definitive end that lends a kind of unity to everything that came before, whether it was, you know, con seemingly connected or not. Yeah. And that's kind of an ex the experience that you have at the end of this movie. You know, it just occurred to me that this final sequence, the bell sequence, is actually the only time that we see art being made, really. Yes. In the film. That's right. The, the rest of the time, they're really just standing around, like, getting ready to make art. Right. You know? It's really uh, significant in their process. Yeah, it's really significant that this is a film about an icon painter who whom we never see painting any icons. And 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 absolutely this final mm -hmm. section where we follow this young this young man, he's 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 a teenager, you're not even sure that he's ever made a bell in his life. I mean, it's the only reason he's in this situation is because the prince needs someone to make a bell and his father, the bell maker, is dead and all of his relatives who were bell maker adjacent have all died too. He's the only one left and you're kind of left with the question of whether he even knows how to do this at all mm -hmm. because it, it seems in the opening moments of this vignette that he might be lying just to 
right. to get out of this town where the plague has struck and his whole family has died. Um, uh, there's real tension that mounts through this whole section about whether this bell is actually going to turn out in the end or not. Um, but it's almost as if we learn something about Andre Rublev vicariously through this this child. In fact, it's almost as if Andre Rublev learned something about himself vicariously through observing this child. You know, I I, I read I read in the insert for the Criterion uh, Blu-ray that Tarkovsky was interested in the maturation of the artist, and I think that this is something that certainly everybody can relate to the experience of maturing over time. But I think artists in particular can see how their artistic practice, how their work really does mature over time, one would hope, and changes. And and so for Tarkovsky, as an artist himself, you know, this being a a a prime, you know, subject of interest, Andrei Rublev, how do you get there? You know, that end point of artistic excellence and maturity and fully coming into one's own. And uh, yeah, it's just so, so, so curious that, that Tarkovsky is able to do this without ever actually showing us Andrei Rublev working on anything. And I think there right. are very few films that um, are, are dexterous in that they can cover the sense of a whole life and also the exquisite kind of power of one particular moment but in the case of this film, there's yeah. several particular moments, you know, like that. So, I think that that in the way that the narrative is handled in these in these vignettes that are seemingly disjointed at times, there's there's like interesting techniques that are employed too, um, not just in terms of how the the narrative is structured, but in 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 the way that the film is shot. Um, you know, there's a lot of like really uh extreme close-ups that's something that that is particularly clear at the end when we when we see uh Ruvlev's icons for the first time it's not you know like these sort of like wide full picture images mm. it's it's really close up on like really small details you know details of like br uh brush strokes or even details of decay in the icon where it's where it's starting to decompose or has been damaged i wonder if there's not an analogy between the way those icons are are showed to us at the end and the way andre rublev's life is showed to us throughout the rest of the film do you know what i'm getting at yeah like, well like in a sense of fragments because uh, I, I think you could say like yeah we're seeing his life in fragments and we end up seeing the icons essentially in fragments, only one or two of the icons we actually see in their kind of full apprehensible view. Um, so right. yeah, this idea of, of, of flashes of moments, I think is really key uh, to what Tarkovsky is, is doing. I think the, the experience of, of zooming in, of getting really close to something, you know, I think that the kind of compression that we see happen in a typical um, uh, biopic of, of an artist, uh, kind of precludes that, that close microscopic look. But when you abandon the need to sort of compress everything into three hours and you take what I think is a more expansive approach that Tarkovsky takes, not mm. just in its duration, but in its, what it actually decides to depict, you, you do get to, maybe get a closer look at a subject maybe i'm i'm just that's a great point yeah, yeah. i think that makes sense cuz you're looking at the soul and like the soul is the same the soul is that person's soul at any at any point in their life yes so you're yes. looking closer at the soul rather than at the external like we have to get the whole complete story step by step here right kind of thing right i think it takes a profound confidence and faith to to do that because you you're putting your faith in the in the belief that that this one moment that you know that you, that basically you do not need to master the material in the way that a biography tries to master material like a, a biographical mm. most biographical works are about the beginning to the ending of a person's life 
And there are plenty of biographical works that can tell you every event that happened in a person's life, but you still come away from it not feeling like you you understood the person right. or that you yeah. saw them another in, in thing, the fullness. And I think, I think Tarkovsky is trying to actually like sorry, address ahead. that. I think he's, he's looking at any given moment of a person's life is, is full of the meaning of their life. And if we take the, if we actually take the time to soak in that, then, you know, we will, we will find what we are looking for.